The Pokemon League challenge usually includes eight gym battles. But what if we took that a step further? What if each region had a ninth gym you had to beat before you could take on the Elite Four? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at today. What up, I'm Elias, and Matt and I will be choosing a type for each gym, explaining why we made our choice, and then giving the hypothetical gym leader a team of Pokemon. For the sake of this video, we're going to pretend we're designing gyms for remakes or new games set in each region. That'll give us access to newer evolutions, regional forms from elsewhere, stuff like that. For the most part, we'll be sticking to the original regional Pokedex, but if we need the extra options, they're there. Alright, let's get started. Adding a ninth gym to Kanto is pretty easy, because there's kind of already an extra one. You've got the eight standard gyms, but there's also the Fighting Dojo in Saffron City, next door to Sabrina's Psychic Gym. The story goes that Koichi's Dojo once competed with Sabrina's Gym to determine who would give out the sixth batch of the Indigo League. Sabrina obviously won, because not only are Psychic-type moves super effective against fighting, but the Psychic-type Pokémon are also just a million times better than the fighting ones. And I think it's fair to say that system is kind of messed up. Of course a fighting gym won't stand a chance against a psychic one. Does that mean I could take over Brock's gym by just showing up with a thousand grass types and four friends? You gotta wonder how often there's conflicts like this, where two people want to open gyms in the same city. In any case, Koichi and company open an unofficial gym next to Sabrina's, where you can obtain a Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. So that's a good start for Koichi's team. He'll use both of the original Hitmons, and maybe you still get to pick one to take after you beat him. The next two Pokemon he could use are also easy choices. Bruno is a fighting type trainer in the Elite Four, but let's be real, he's basically a glorified hiker. For whatever reason, in most Kanto games, he's got two Onix instead of, you know, Primeape and Poliwrath, two fighting types that no other major trainer uses. So, Koichi can take them for his gym. Bruno does use Poliwrath in the Let's Go games, but he sticks to the Hitmons, Onix, and Machamp in every other game. For the sake of this video, let's assume the new gym leader we create is the last one, so Koichi would come after Giovanni. In our hypothetical new Kanto game, the story would find some way to send you back to Saffron City, or maybe he'd move his gym somewhere else. In that spirit, I think it would make sense to give Koichi a fifth Pokémon. But if we don't want too much overlap with Bruno, then we don't have many options. We could add a pre-evolution, like Mankey or Machoke, but we'd rather not do that since this would be the final gym. There's a bunch of new fighting-type forms of Kanto Pokémon, but there's no way we're giving a gym leader a Mega Mewtwo or a Galarian Zapdos. We could give Koichi a Hitmontop, since we now know that it's an alternate evolution to Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. But just for kicks and giggles, let's give him Polly and Tauros as his last Pokémon. Maybe the form of Tauros he has depends on which version of the game you're playing. One version could have the Blaze breed, and one could have the Aqua breed. Who knows? Agatha uses an Alolan Marowak and let's go Pikachu and Eevee, so I think it's fair game to give a gym leader a form from another region as well. But if you think that's a little out there, then our alternatives would be Hitmontop or Machamp. Dealer's choice. For the Johto region, the choice was pretty easy. The existing Johto gyms are just eight of the nine types that didn't get gyms in Kanto, so the only type with no gym across the two regions is Dark, which I think is kind of a shame. Yeah, you've got Karen in the Elite Four, but that means Dark is the only type to be added after Gen 1 that didn't get a gym in its debut generation. And Karen's got... A weird team, man. She's got most of the Dark types added in Gen 2, but she's got a Vileplume and Gengar on her team instead of, you know, the pseudo-legendary Tyranitar. Of course, Karen is famous for her quote, Strong Pokémon, weak Pokémon, that is only the selfish perception of people. Truly skilled trainers should try to win with their favorites, and so on and so on and so on. And that's a good philosophy for a playthrough of a game. You can make just about anything work. I mean, look at Ash Ketchum. He had his Pikachu for 84 years and never evolved it. Karen's idea is less true in competitive contexts, but that's a topic for another time. Karen might not have a Tyranitar simply because she doesn't like it. She doesn't want to make it work because she'll enjoy herself more with the roster she chose. But hey, that makes things easier for me. Our hypothetical Dark Gym for a Johto remake in Generation 117 would start with Tyranitar, which would of course be the Ace. Karen also doesn't use a Sneasel or Weavile in your first battle against her in any games, so let's add a Weavile to our Gym Leader's team. We're going to be giving most of the gyms in this video 5 Pokémon. In that case, if we want to avoid reusing any of Karen's Pokémon, we're going to have to choose some different forms from this point forward. I doubt Mega Evo- I doubt Mega- I doubt- I- he died. I doubt Mega Evolution will come back to the series anytime soon, so we're gonna say Mega Gyarados is probably off the table. That leaves us with the Alolan forms of Raticate, Persian, and Muk, plus Overquill. An evolution of Hisui and Quillfish. Oh my goodness. Let's go! That sentence took you like two minutes. Yeah, whoops. Uh, ignore it. Anyways, this next one is gonna take me five. Awesome. I mean, there's also Galarian Moltres, but, uh, no. 
Let's take Persian Muck and Overquill for our Dark Gym, but in a hypothetical scenario where Karen retired, we could use Umbreon, Honchko, and Houndoom instead. Alright, from this point forward, we're gonna avoid any types that are taken by an Elite Four member or champion in the same region. We just did Fighting for Kanto because there already is an unofficial Fighting Gym, and we did Dark for Johto for completion's sake. But with that in mind, let's make our ninth Hoenn Gym Grass type. Gen 3 introduced a ton of Grass Pokemon, so it's a shame there's no gym to show them off. We can actually fill out this entire team with Gen 3 Pokemon, plus one later evolution if you're feeling spicy. We got Sceptile, Tropius, Cradilly, Cacturn, Shiftry, Roselia or Roserade, Breloom, and Ludicolo. Vileplume and Belossum are also in the Hoenn decks, so that's 10 options for a Grass Gym. Obviously, that's way too many for one team, so we're gonna have to make some cuts. Let's bring it down to 5 for the sake of this video. First off, since it's possible to build a team using just Hoenn Pokemon, we're gonna eliminate Vileplume and Belossum right off the bat. We don't love gym leaders having starter Pokemon, looking at you Gardenia, so Sceptile is gone. Three of our Pokemon that are left are taken by other late game trainers. Sydney uses Cacturn and Shiftry, and Wallace uses Ludicolo as a champion in Pokemon Emerald. But since Sydney is the very next boss you fight, let's drop the dark types for our gym. That way you're not fighting two of the same Pokemon in back to back boss battles. Plus, Ludicolo isn't part of a late game boss's team in most of the Hoenn games, so we can just say Steven is the champion in our hypothetical Hoenn games. Wallace only uses Ludicolo as the champion, not as a gym leader. Actually, you know what? If we're making a follow up to Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, we can make the champion whoever we want. So, screw it, I'm declaring myself the champion. My team is for Alligator, Torterra, Dial. The other possible types for a new Hoenn gym are Poison, Ground, and Bug. You could absolutely make gyms based around these types, but Grass was the first one that jumped out at us. And by us, I mean me, I'm the one doing most of the writing. Yeah, I'm just here for the ride, actually. <laughs> yeah, I do the writing, I do the editing, Elias is just my friend. I just show up every once in a while, basically. I mean uh, everybody leave a comment showing some love to Elias anyway. Thank you. <laughs> we love Elias in this house. Whoops, quick addendum, fellas. I didn't catch this before we recorded the script, but Steven uses Cradilly as the champion. That means it has the same problem as Ludicolo. That doesn't affect our choices, just wanted to point it out. That makes our final team Tropius, Cradilly, Ludicolo, Roselia or Roserade, and Breloom. But it does mean we're probably better off finding a new champion. So I guess Elias gets the job after all. We're gonna have to talk about the Dialga, though. Next up is the Sinnoh region. Our choices here are Poison, Dragon, Normal, Flying, and Dark. Fairy is technically an option as well, but we'd rather avoid a type that didn't exist when the region was introduced. We're also gonna avoid normal, because it's a pretty basic type. We love Larry in this house, but we're gonna have other options. We no longer love Elias, he's now our least favorite guy. Oh man. What if I just legally changed my name to Larry? Uh, La Larry I mean, that, that's a good name. Lor Lawrence I don't know. I'm gonna say Dragon is out as well, because the only non-legendary Dragon type in the Diamond and Pearl decks is Garchomp, and I don't fancy using Dialga and Palky as a gym leader. Elias does apparently, though. I also don't fancy getting a cease and desist letter from Cynthia, because I'm using her ace and its four nephews. The only Dragon type the Platinum decks added is Altaria, so I'm gonna steer clear of a Dragon type gym for Sinnoh. Out of the options that are left, let's go with a Poison type gym. Is it the most threatening type in the universe? No, not really, but the first Elite Four member, Aaron, specializes in the Flip and Bug type. I think we're fine. As far as a poison gym goes, there's enough choices in the diamond and pearl decks to make a full team. We got a zillion poison types, but two fire types. Wasn't diamond and pearl a wonderful game? Anyway, the platinum decks didn't add any new poison types, which we didn't realize until we looked at all the pokedexes for this video. And by that, I mean that Matt didn't realize until he looked at all the Pokedexes for this video. Our Poison Gym leader would have a Crobat, Gengar, Toxicroak, Roserade, and Tentacruel. I'm just now realizing Gardenia has a Roserade, oh well. Drapion is an option as well, but once again, your battle against Aaron will be coming up very soon, so I'd rather not reuse one of his Pokemon. I also avoided Dustox for the same reason. Well, that plus Dustox is a pushover. Can't be having that in this house. Actually, you know what? Aaron, you're fired. I'm taking over your spot. Screw the gym. Jokes aside, there's other possibilities for a 9th Sinnoh gym as well. There's plenty of dark types for a gym leader's team, and as usual there's a ton of flying types as well. And you can even make an argument for a dragon type gym if you wanted to. You can expand the Pokedex in a remake or sequel, but then you can make a dragon gym work without Garchomp. Or with Garchomp, your choice, but don't say I didn't warn you. For more videos like this, subscribe to Me Plays Games, and consider becoming a channel member. Our options in Unova are considerably more limited for a couple of reasons. For one, the gym leaders in black and white represent a whopping 10 types instead of 8, thanks to the triplets Silen, Chili, and Cress, who are Grass, Fire, and Water type trainers respectively. Granted, the only Grass, Fire, or Water type Pokemon that they use on their respective teams are the- what the hell am I saying? <laughs> 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 what were you saying? That's a great question, because that's not what I wrote. Whoops. 
Granted, the only grass, fire, or water Pokemon they use are their respective elemental monkeys, but we've never had two gyms of the same type in the same region at the same time, so we're going to avoid those. Second of all, Black and White got sequels, and Black and White 2 introduced the poison type gym leader Roxy. We also got new normal and water type gym leaders in the form of Charon and Marlin. So that's 11 types represented by gym leaders, and 4 more are taken by the Elite Four. So if we want to use a type that wouldn't overlap with any Unova bosses, there are only two options, Rock and Steel. We're gonna like, not put a Rock Gym in Unova, because good god there were too many Rock Gyms in early gens. Brock, Roxanne, and Roark are the first gym leaders in their respective regions, and they all specialize in Rock types. Fighting Rock Gems probably got stale for a lot of people, so I'm going with the Steel type. Since Pokemon Black and White's original decks is all new Pokemon, it's a pretty balanced and well-rounded roster. So we have enough Steel types to make a team and then some. Our options are Excadrill, Escavalier, Ferrothorn, Clank Clang, Bisharp, and Durant. Well, there's also Kabalion and Genesect, but uh, no. So that's six Pokemon, but I'm gonna cut one of them to make it five. And I think it's gonna have to be Bisharp. Black and White is the first game where you can fight the Elite Four in any order. So if you choose to fight Grimsley first, you'd be fighting a Bisharp in your last gym battle and your first Elite Four battle. Fortunately, that's the only Steel type in the Elite Four, so there's no other conflicts we have to deal with. That would make our Steel type team a Scavalier, Kevin Durant, Clink Clang, Excadrill, and Ferrothorn. There is a small issue of Clay having Excadrill as his ace, though. Actually, you know what? He's fired too. With the Fairy type being added in Gen 6 and no mid generation gym leader shakeups, we've got more options for a 9th gym in Kalos. Fairy is not one of them. The choices we do have are Normal, Flying, Dark, Ground, Poison, and Ghost. And you can make a solid gym for any of these types, because Kalos is one of the biggest regional Pokedexes in the history of the series. If we were to revisit Kalos, I think Mega Evolution would return as a one-off, because it played a role in the game's story. Parentheses. Although between you and me, it should have played a way bigger role. The fact that the Elite Four doesn't use the game's gimmick is a war crime, and it's a big reason X and Y are infamous for being so easy. The champion Diantha has a Mega Gardevoir, but that's the only Mega you fight in a Pokemon League battle for the entire game, because the gym leader don't use them either. Close parentheses. With that in mind, we have three Mega Candidates. Gengar and Bayonet got Megas in X and Y, and Sableye got one in Oras. And in my book, Gengar is the clear winner here. It will end you on a moment's notice. Its ability Shadow Tag isn't a big hindrance in a playthrough, but it's still an inconvenience. So Mega Gengar is our ace, cool. For this video, we're only going to give our Ghost Gym Leader 4 Pokemon, since for whatever reason, no Gym Leader has more than 3 in X and Y, and every Elite 4 member only uses 4. If we were reworking the entire Kalos League from scratch, we'd give the Ghost Leader 5 Pokemon, but M and J TV already made a video doing just that, so I'm not going to take this idea to the next level today. With that in mind, we've got 3 more team members to go. The next 2 Pokemon are the first 2 Grass slash Ghost types. Gorgeist and Trevenant. We'd like to make Aegislash the fourth team member, since it's the last non-mythical ghost type introduced in Gen 6, but the Steel Specialist Wickstrom uses one in the Elite Four. And just like the Unova League, you can fight the Kalos Elite Four in any order you'd like. So once again, you could end up fighting Aegislash in your last gym battle, as well as your first Elite Four battle. No thanks. And I'm not giving a gym leader a Hoopa either. So we're gonna look outside of Kalos for our last team member, and the decks gives us quite a few options. Naked Rotom, Sableye, Bayonet, Golurk, Driftlim, Chandelure, huh? Oh, whoops, Malva's got a Chandelure. Alright, guess that's disqualified too. What a shame. The other options are all well and good, but I'm gonna do something a little bit sillier. Okay, a lot a bit sillier. I'm giving our Ghost Gym Leader Shedinja. Is it a little mean to make a Shedinja battle mandatory to beat the game? Yeah. Will some people not be aware how Wonder Guard works and throw a million attacks at it that it's immune to? Probably. But I like causing chaos on this channel, and it's not like my horrible choices will actually impact anything. Let's skip over Alola for today and head straight to Galar. And we have a similar situation to Kanto here. Thanks to Sword and Shield's DLC, we know of several gym leaders you don't fight during the main story. Peony is a former gym leader specializing in steel types. He was <laughs> very much unlike his name. <laughs> eh, what are you gonna do? He was even the champion at one point, but he stepped down after his brother Rose became the chairman of the Pokemon League. All things considered, I doubt he'd return to be a gym leader. Mustard was also a gym leader slash champion at various points, specializing in mustard type Pokemon, specializing in fighting type Pokemon. He remained the champion for 18 years, before he retired after the chairman of the time suggested a match be thrown in his favor. Plus, Mustard is like a million years old. There's also a new fighting gym leader in town, and I don't think B is going anywhere, so I'm gonna say Mustard's no good either. So that leaves two other characters we can take a look at. In the Isle of Armor, there are two gym leaders who serve as rivals. In Pokemon Sword, your rival is the poison type specialist Clara, and in Shield, it's the psychic type specialist Avery. They eventually reveal that they've become minor league gym leaders for their respective types, so I think it would be cool to see a follow up to Sword and Shield, where they eventually become official major league gym leaders. Sword and Shield are the first games where version exclusive gym leaders specialize in different types. So Clara could be a gym leader you fight in one version, and then Avery would appear in the other. 
Fortunately, their teams are already made for us, because if you rematch them after finishing the Galarian Star Tournament, they use teams of 5 Pokemon. So Avery's team is Galarian Slowbro, Galarian Rapidash, Swoobat, Alakazam, and Galarian Slowking. And Clara's team also includes the Galarian Slow Twins, alongside Galarian Weezing, Drapion, and Scolipede. And that brings us to Paldea, the final stop for this ridiculous exercise. Between the gym leaders, Elite Four, Titan Battles, and Team Star, every single type has at least one boss battle. As far as we're concerned, Team Star bosses are just gym leaders with cars, so we're not going to step on their toes today. If we discount the Titans and only look at battles against human trainers, we only have one option. The only type not represented by a gym leader, Elite Four member, or Team Star boss is the Rock type. So the game practically picked a type for us for this video. How nice. Our options are Glamora, Cloth, Gargamel. <laughs> 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 Our options are Glamora, Cloth, Garganical, Pseudobudo, Lycanroc, Colossal, Tyranitar, Stonejourner, and Iron Thorns. There's a Pokemon named Iron Thorns? Yeah, it's a paradox form of Tyranitar. Right off the bat, I'm eliminating Iron Thorns from the running, because it doesn't make sense for gym leaders to have paradox Pokemon. Director Clavel makes it a point that the Academy students are forbidden from going to Area Zero, which is the only place paradox Pokemon can normally be found. The timey-wimey Don fan in the desert seems to be a freak occurrence. For the sake of the gym leader's safety, I doubt any of them would go down there to get one for themselves. We're gonna pass on Glamour since that's Gita's ace. Although between you and me, it really shouldn't be. How are you gonna have an ability that sets up entry hazards, but then always send it out last? Gita, you're fine. Beep. Either way, we can avoid using Glamora because the dex has enough rock types in it. Next, we're disqualifying Pseudobudo because Brassius is using one, and once again, there's enough options for us to avoid repeats. And the final Pokemon we're eliminating is Cloth. None of the gym leaders. None of the gym leaders use any Pokemon you fight in Titan battles, so we're not going to make our rock type gym the exception. So that leaves Colossal, Lycanroc, Garganical, Stonejourner, and Tyranitar. Not bad. Oh wait, actually we're not done. Most gym leaders pick one Pokemon that's a different type, but then that Pokemon terrestrializes into the gym leader specialty. So I guess we should pick a non-rock type to be our terrestrializing ace. The world is my oyster here, but I'm not gonna go through 400 Pokemon and methodically pick one. If I did that, we'd be here all day. Let's make our Terra user Crocodile, for no reason in particular. I like it, it's a pretty cool Pokemon, but there's not much context or backstory behind my choice. Like most round types, it has access to a lot of rock moves, but that's about it. But with that in mind, I don't think it makes sense to have Tyranitar on the team in this case. Since Crocodile will be our ace, it would be pretty weird for a pseudo-legendary to play second to Banana. So we're gonna replace Tyranitar with Crocodile entirely. So this is our final team. You know, I was pleasantly surprised by our results. We didn't think we'd only end up repeating types once, but that'll do it for this video. Subscribe to Me Plays Games if you enjoyed yourself. There's plenty of possibilities we didn't cover in this video, so feel free to make up your own 9th gyms in the comments. We'll see you all next time. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.